Let's look at that, how we can connect our network to Cloud Connexa. As you can see, I'm logged into our admin user interface of our Cloud Connexa. First thing you need to do, expand networks and click on networks. We are presented with three options or three scenarios here. So we have remote access, site to site or secure internet access. So you can choose one or multiple scenarios depending on your situation. Once you're done with your selection, click on continue. This is where you're going to give a name to your uh, network. So I'm just going to call it uh, CC Demo Net 2. And then uh, for, the kind of, uh, for the tunneling protocol, we have two options, either OpenVPN protocol or IPsec. IPsec is compatible with a wide range of software and hardware platforms. This option requires additional mutual protocol configurations on both ends. It's recommended for use when the OpenVPN connector is not a viable option. For the purpose of this demo, we're just going to leave it as OpenVPN. The next step is giving a name to our uh, connector. So I'm just going to call it CC Demo Net 2. And a connector is basically an unattended device that ensures a continuous connectivity to Cloud Connector. You can set up multiple uh, connectors to uh, enhance high availability and enable load balancing. For optimal performance, it is recommended to select the region closest to your deployment locations uh, of your connector or your resources. So for me, it's going to be in Los Angeles area. So I'm just going to choose Los Angeles and then click on Next. This is where we can deploy our connector. And if you click on this drop down, we can see that the platforms that we can deploy our connector connectors on. Uh, we have public uh, cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, GCP, operating systems, uh, again, such as Linux, Windows servers, virtual private server providers such as DigitalOcean, and OpenVPN compatible routers such as Teltonica and PFSense. No matter what option you choose, there will be some instructions to help you uh, deploying the connector. For example, if I choose Teltonica, there is an OpenVPN uh, profile that I can download, and then uh, there will be an instructions on how to use that profile on my router. If I go ahead and choose, for example, a Windows uh, server, you can see that first step will be downloading the Connect app, then the second step uh, running the OpenVPN Connect app as a service, and then enabling routing and a NAT on Windows Server. If you click on those links, it's just going to give you some instructions on how to do these. For the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to use AWS. Again, for AWS, as you can see, the very first step is choosing my AWS region, which is going to be US West 1. And then the second step is launching connector on AWS automatically. So if, if I click on launch, it's going to take me to a cloud formation stack. And here we go. This is where we need to give uh, a name to our stack, give a name to our instance, and then configure our uh, VPC uh, and uh, subnet and then SSH key. So I'm going to fast forward through the steps, but uh, you need to go through each step and configure it with your correct uh, VPC information. OK, I've uh, entered all the information for the instance name. I gave it OVN Lab CC Demo Net. And then the last part is uh, clicking on this checkbox. It says, I acknowledge that AWS CloudFormation might create an IAM resource. And then click on Create a Stack. So as you can see, the creation is in progress. This is going to take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's done. OK, as you can see, the uh, stack creation is completed. So if I go to my EC2 uh, dashboard, and let's refresh this here, we can see here OVN Lab CC Demo Net. It's up and running. So let's go back to our Cloud Connexa admin user interface. The uh, third step is going to be modifying security groups and check VPC route table. Again, if you click on this link, it's going to take you to a page with instructions on how to do so. I'm going to bypass this and click on Next. We can see our connector is online. We get a green light here that it's connected. So let's click on Next. This screen is basically is going to give us some uh, information about our uh, network uh, as far as the allocated WPC subnets. Uh, domain routing subnets, and so on. Let's click on Next. Here where we can add applications. Applications basically offer a simple way to manage access to public 
and private resources using domain names. There is no need to set up IP routing for your applications as Cloud Connexo handles routing exclusively uh, through domain names. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Add Applications. I have an application on my network uh, name accounting that I need some of my users to have access to. For the application type or protocols, click on uh, this Edit button. And then for this uh, specific application, I just need HTTP and HTTPS. Click on Submit. And then we're going to add the domain name. Uh, in my case, it's going to be accounting ovnlab.local and click on add application. Now, if you need to add more applications, we can click on add application here and add them. You can also add your SaaS applications here as well. Click on next. This is where you can add your IP routes uh, or IP services. We don't have anything for the purpose of this demo and I'm just going to bypass and click on next. And uh, configuring access group is going to be our last step. Access groups are used to establish access control policies for user groups, hosts, networks, and applications and IP services. You can create a new access group or update an existing one uh, to define access to uh, this newly added networks or applications or IP services. Once your access group configuration is completed, then we can click on uh, finish. But you can see the default access group is the full mesh. Basically, what it means that everyone has access to every resources on our network. Um, one more thing, and uh, make a note here, if you create a specific access group, then we need to change our topology from full mesh to custom. I'm going to click finish here. And we can see our network has been added to our Cloud Connect. So the connection status is online and we can see the split tunnel is on and so on. Uh, now, if I click on applications, we can see the applications that we shared here. Uh, accounting is the one. If I need to add more applications, I can do that here as well. For the IP services or IP routes, again, we didn't have anything when we went through the uh, adding the network. But if I need to add anything at any time, I can do that uh, by clicking on this tab. Connectors, we can see our connector is online. Current protocol is OpenVPN. Now, if uh, we need to add more connectors, we can add more connectors here. As I said earlier, uh, especially if we want to do load balancing or for redundancy, we can add more connectors uh, here. One last thing I need to show you is adding the DNS records. Uh, if you remember, we added the application, the accounting um, application here. So we need to add uh, the DNS record to our system. So if you expand settings and go to DNS, this is where you can uh, either add your own DNS servers here, or we can just add a DNS record. So if I click on add DNS record, I can just uh, add my domain name here, the IP address for my server, which I'm going to add the private IP address to my server, and then click on add DNS record. So this was a quick video on how to connect your network to Cloud Connection.